Wednesday's edition here of Kalata and the Prince, the vlog center of the week. Kevin Y joins us from the 8 o'clock hour every Wednesday here on your morning drive. Uh, broke some news here early this morning. First pitch for the LSU baseball game has been delayed, and the start will be Thursday night. Yeah, it'll be a 6.30 first pitch, 6 o'clock uh, pregame show on Eagle 98.1. Uh, LSU will move the game back to Thursday. It was something that Paul Maneri had told us about on Monday, that the possibility was there with the inclement weather. As you can see over Kevin's shoulder, the weather is nasty out there, so we'll play the game Thursday night. Kev, um, NFL Combine in the books. We talked to you a lot about uh, some of the guys that showed out up there. Lyle Collins, the offensive line, a guy that uh, you know real well, uh, went up there and really had a good good showing. Um, you expect for him at pro day to just kind of get on the field and, and meet with coaches, not necessarily get down here and work out. Yeah, he did a great job at Combine. His numbers in, boded well for him. You know, hit a, a decent 40, strong bench press. So when pro day comes on the 27th, his, he'll be expected just to run offensive line drills. You know, you're blocking drills, balance drills, stuff that the NFL O-line coaches will put him through. So that's something that between now and the 26th of the next month that he'll be working on. I think Daniil Hunter had a great combine, helped his case out with his bench and his 40-yard time. His freakish athletic ability is no surprise to anybody here. But in the LSU running backs didn't run so well. Uh, I think they have to. Those are the guys that got to put up better numbers during the the pro day. One of the things you mentioned on air today that I thought was pretty interesting was the point where the coaches bring you inside of the office. They put you on a board and they say, "Draw me up your your, your favorite play against the forty front, against the fifty front, against the dog front, whatever it may be." And just understanding the terminology and not necessarily believing, "All right, this guy's just an athlete that works out and he likes football." This guy's a football player. Yeah, they want to see a guy. His football IQ is what they call it. Can he distinguish between the different fronts? Can he can he draw up the same play against a, a multitude of fronts? And it gives them an idea of what kind of like football knowledge they have what kind of coaching they've gotten in the past um it shows that he's he's more than just uh, do what i say do guy he's a guy that studies the game studies the film and uh a guy that they like to see uh, in the meeting rooms that way when they get into practice and get into training camp they're not behind the eight ball they're already on the ground running with it and you're doing some one-on-one training over at traction right now getting people ready uh, ready for pro days and nfl draft and you spend a lot of time on the board and talking terminology. We do. We'll go, you know, six hours, seven hours a week, and we'll spend two or three of those hours actually on the board or watching film. We'll go back and watch some of the stuff that we did on the field and talk about it. But understanding the terminology, understanding how coaches, the language of coaches, when you're talking about zone steps and drop steps and running tracks and hand placements, those are things that, that kids need to hear on a regular basis. But sitting down in front of a whiteboard with a marker and say, okay, I want you to draw up every front that you know and label them. Um, it gets a little difficult for some kids sometimes, and so you try to go through a, a methodical process of assimilating what they know to football language and how they're going to hear it in the NFL locker room, and uh, it definitely helps. Jarrell Martin, another big night for LSU on the floor last night at 25-12 and 12 against Auburn as uh, LSU gets their second win in a row. Um, and kind of moving forward this weekend as Ole Misses in Baton Rouge. Yeah, when you look at it, uh, Jarrell Martin and Jalen Patterson, a great game last night. Uh, LSU with uh, you know commanding victory on the road against Auburn. Tigers are playing well. Come home this Sunday against Ole Miss, a game that they they, uh, they that not only is it is it a game that if they win, they continue to solidify their ground in the uh, the NCAA, NCAA tournament's eyes, but. It's another game where it can provide you with that opportunity to play yourself into one of those top four seeds. Top four seeds gets a double bye at the at the SEC tournament in Nashville. LSU needs to continue to win, play themselves into the best position possible. Ole Miss, Tennessee, Arkansas still left on the regular season schedule. Last night, Arkansas beats Texas A&M. Texas A&M makes it interesting at the end, but uh, that last playing date, a lot of people will be paying attention to. All right, your favorite uh, your favorite boy band lip singer? <laughs> That'd be Jimmy Chesthair, man. And I got to go with the you know, Margaritaville guys. You know, Charlie. It was a Charlie and uh, and, and Jimmy. Jimmy. They did a great job. They felt like they were in the groove, one hundred percent. I think they spent a lot of time under a cabana with drinks and <laughs> drinks and uh, you know umbrellas wait, in their wait, drinks. Wait. So- so you're saying that they prepped for this by doing what by they've action, done action, for 30 action, years? Absolutely. They they felt they looked a little too comfortable in that, but uh, they, there's no doubt that they they were spot on. Every Wednesday, Kalad and the Prince, eight-time All-Pro, eight-time Pro Bowler Kevin Mawai with us. Join us weekday morning, seven to nine a.m. and check out our podcast at 1045ESPN.com. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN, and don't forget. Next two days for us, Dreams Come True Radiothon will be going on right here, 104.5, 104.9 ESPN Baton Rouge.